Pocket Day in Canada continues here. Great song with the top turn. We lose chaos from Whippy, Ontario. Same place that James Neal had called home at one place. Lots to get into tonight as the Edmonton Oilers visit the Vancouver Canucks at Rogers Arena. For more on what we can expect, including Alex Burroughs, here's Cassie Campbell Pascal. Cass. George, you mentioned Alex Burroughs is out, and all I can tell you, the updated information is that it is an upper body injury. The Canucks will also be without Ryan Miller's second straight game. It seems that the recovery from his injury is taking longer than the Canucks expected. That's what Willie Desjardins told us this morning. No Chris Tanev either, which means Andre Padin will draw in his second ever NHL game on the back end. Cam Talbot for the Edmonton Oilers, he's turned a corner. Two wins in his last three games. Two games of the 44-plus save variety. So that's good news for the Oilers, who are just three points back of the Vancouver Canucks in the division Pacific Division playoff race. But Todd McClellan will have none of that. He won't even talk play. Playoffs. They are just 36 games in. He says there's still a lot of work to do. George? All right, thank you very much, Cassie Campbell Pasco. Oilers and the Vancouver Canucks uh, playing tonight on CBC. Taylor Hall, three assists in his last game. They gave him five points in his last five games. Um, this is a team that when Connor McDavid went down, people went, oh, okay, here we go. They're going to make another play for the number one pick on the lottery. And for a second, it looked like that might have been the case, but Edmonton is starting. To put something yeah. together, aren't they? Well, for me, it's it's dry saddle, and we've all seen the upside that Hall's had over the last few years. But there was never this ability to really get comfortable with anyone in particular, even Nugent Hopkins, which is a terrific hockey player. But never did we see the last few years the magic that we've seen in this short stint with Dreisaitl. And it just seems that he's smarter when giving up the puck in the neutral zone and winning to give it back. But there seems to be this magic and this trust between Dreisaitl and Hall that we haven't seen uh, in, in years past. Four points in the last four games for Dreisaitl. You know, the other thing is, he's such a powerful skater, dynamic skater. I think in the past he might have been a hair reckless at times, and now he's turning it on at the right times. Here, coming up the ice, leaving the third checker right there. Great play on the three-on-two. And then here in overtime, you know, he turns the corner, two-on-one. No one's going to catch him now. No, no question in my mind, he's, he's timing his skating way better. No Tanev, no Ham Hughes, no Spiza. No Miller. Alex Edler is going to have to have a monster night tonight if the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, the goalie is obvious, mm -hmm. but yeah. Alex Edler is going to have to be a huge tonight if the Vancouver Canucks. Well, he's going to have game. to eat some big minutes uh, yeah. with no Chris Tanev. Going to be close to 30 tonight. I could see for maybe Edler. As we approach the end of 2015, are the Vancouver Canucks players looking at the Oilers coming up hot now on them? Is that is that in their mind? In that whole division, like you're not, nobody's out of it. Only LA seems to be solid at this Nobody's point. out of it. Edmonton Oilers in British Columbia to play the Vancouver Canucks tonight as hockey night in Canada continues. Nuts and oil when we return on CBC. For three days of excessive shortbread ingestion. Let's see, where were we? Oh, yes, the Canucks just back off a 15,000 kilometer road trip, hold a playoff spot. The owners trying to figure out how to win on the road are just three points in arrears. Big night for both of these goaltenders tonight. Anders Nilsson has carried the owners for a while, and maybe now it's Cam Talbot's turn. Two and one in December with a 947 save percentage. His last start was the theft of a couple of points from Winnipeg on Monday. Jacob Markstrom, or Jacob Marley, as we're allowed to call him once a year, has not won two in a row for the Canucks. He has that chance after a win in Tampa. He hasn't won at home this season, and he's never beaten Edmonton. So his challenge is obvious. So the Canucks need to jumpstart a seven-game homestand. The Oilers need to jump a depleted lineup. Four of the top 30 scorers in the league are on the ice to start the game. You saw Taylor Hall with Leon Dreisaitl. Daniel and Henrik Sedin, their lines could play a lot against each other tonight. And with no Chris Tanev in the lineup, Matt Bartkowski starts with Alex Edler, who, as Elliot mentioned, will likely be busy tonight as the Canucks try and move out of their own zone, and they do. Their hottest forward is Daniel Sedin with the drop pass to Henrik. Yannick Hansen is with them in front of the net, and he tipped the puck, but he tipped it into the corner. Andre Sekera on defense. Paired on the blue line with Mark Fiend right now. Here's Taylor Hall, got the puck loose, and he couldn't get by Matt Bartkowski. So he turns back, Teddy Purcell. He's been hot on this line, and his shot went off a skate. And both teams will make their first change of the night. Darnell Nurse 
Number 25 for the Oilers. Stops behind the net. Jordan Everly, Ryan Nugent Hopkins up front. Benoit Pouliot, a line that was excellent last year, and as they all get healthy, they hope for a return to that. Giveaway in the corner as Markstrom tried to clear the puck. Nugent Hopkins kept it in. Pouliot is number 67. He's checked, and Sven Berchi starts out. Moore Horvat is in the middle. And down the right side, Radom Verbata takes a shot. This line has been pretty good in the last couple of games, given the Canucks a secondary offensive push. Perci scored in three straight. His pass tipped off a stick. Yannick River is back. He's paired on defense with rookie Ben Hutton. And both teams make changes again. Yeah, both teams like the fact that you've got some continuous play, the turkey legs trying to get them out and get yourself back into playing mode after the break. Seems like an eternity. Three days off and the players spread out all over the place and enjoy a few days off. And here's a three on two. Mark Letestu up the middle. Korpakoski shot deflected wide. Matt Hendricks off the back of the net. Got the puck back. And to the blue line, Nikita Nikitin fired high and wide. In comes Eric Dreiba off the blue line. He stopped and the Canucks get the puck and out they start quickly. Eric Dorsey down the wing couldn't get by Nikitin. Matt Hendricks takes over in the other direction. Alex Viega paired on defense here. And Andre Padan, number 29, plays his first game at home for the Canucks. Just his second NHL game in his first time as a defenseman. Had to play on the wing when he was last called up in L.A. And it's on Lander. Fourth lines are on, so both teams have been able to get everybody in the game. Lander. Gazdick with a shot. Missed the net. On the other side, Sekra holds the puck in. Matt Bartkowski knocked it down. And a great skater gets out to center to Brandon Frost. He's got Cracknell just offside, but he dumped the puck in. And back the other way come the Edmonton orders. Luke Gazdick, number 20, drives wide against Alex Edler. Centering pass was knocked away by the goaltender. Leon Dreisaitl has come on. Justin Schultz with a shot from the blue line. And Jacob Markstrom makes his first save. Good early pace, and both of the coaches yeah. don't like that, as you said, to roll get the line of the game. Get everybody going. Here's Taylor Hall. Snaps a shot. Markstrom makes the save and stops play three minutes and four seconds in. Well, we talked about the importance of this stand for Willie Desjardins. You look at the first four games, all against Pacific Division rivals, and Jim, never has that been more important than this year with how close it is. And the important thing off of this break, as Willie was saying this morning, is just to get your team revved up. They've struggled on home ice. Look at the injuries at the bottom. It's a tough task when you're shorthanded. Well, this is an incredibly important stretch for the Vancouver Canucks. Especially on the back end. There's a turnover in the blue line. Pouliot, Jordan Everly, and the puck was swept away off his stick. That defensive play was made by Yannick Weber. Back up the middle, Nugent Hopkins missed a pass, and that turned the puck over to Bull Horvat. It was with Sven Berchi and Radom Verbata. Sophomore Horvat turned back at the blue line. Justin Schultz advances the puck. Taylor Hall's trying to get loose. Nugent Hopkins skates onto the puck, takes the shot, marks from the save, and he gathers in the rebound, and the Oilers have had a few early chances. The Canucks not. And you can see Todd McClellan changing his lines a little bit to try to get Hall back out there. This is what you can't do against this Edmonton Oilers team right now is turn the puck over, pull it out with a little drop back, and that's one where Everly just try to delay and make an extra move. Here's Nugent Hopkins again who gets settled in with Hall and Markstrom for those important early saves. Now Jared McCann against Leon Dreisaitl, and McCann who's really struggled with faceoffs, won that one. You would think that Todd McClellan will really be working his bench tonight to try and jump the Vancouver Canucks and get a favorable matchup against a depleted defensive core. And right now he's got an opportunity to get a line change, but I would expect Dreisaitl and Hall and Purcell to get an opportunity to jump and come on in the middle of play. That's been the, one of the hottest lines in the National Hockey League with some real chemistry. Aaron McCann having to stay on after the icing call, and Matt Hendricks steps in to take the draw. Latestu and Korpakoski on the line that's been together most of the season. A pretty dependable third line for Edmonton. And Hendricks won the draw. Nikitin with a wrist shot. Markstrom with a nice leg save. Eric Dorsett off the boards. Here's Ronald's cannons on Griba, who knocked the puck away, and Hendricks comes back to help out. Griba on defense. Canucks changing on the fly. A tip in by Hendricks. Markstrom will play the puck to Matt Bartkowski. His hard around cannons into the middle. And the Canucks have to escape to the puck and move it ahead. Here's Derek Dorsett. McCann falls in behind him. 
Takes the pass as the cycle begins in the corner. Andre Sekra patiently decides to play the puck back to his partner Mark Fain. The Hendricks and the Oilers should be able to get out of their own zone. Yeah, that changing on the fly that you said for the Vancouver Canucks, it's all about the defenseman. There's Adam Crackle playing on the wing tonight on the fourth line with Lyndon Vey and Brandon Crossbartkowski. Followed the puck, fell down. Here's Hendricks, fakes, takes wide of the net. Racing for the puck, it's thrown to the front of the net. And holding on is Markstrom as Ivo Pakarinen got the carom off the inboards and the second chance. Well, I was mentioning the changes, and what you see a lot of is Alexander Edler changing on the fly when it's the Hendricks line. And here, Barkowski just gets his feet caught underneath them. Hendricks realizes that he doesn't have a whole lot of time, but how about Padan coming across and being hard and physical on Hendricks there, taking away any chance. Hendricks looking to buy a little time there on the fake, and Padan with a good second shift for him. Padan's a big man. He's 6'4". He's over 200. He's 22 years old, a Lithuanian. Oilers won the ensuing face-off. Darnell Nurse doesn't have a shot, so he just knocks the puck in deep, and the Sedins will start out with Yannick Hansen. Hendricks carrying the puck. Daniels on the other side. The pass to him went off the skate of Weber, who was darting up the middle. Drysidle back defensively to help the defense. Taylor Hall, rink wide. Justin Schultz jumps up, has a look around, sees a change on the other side. Into the middle for Drysidle. Can't get by Ben Hutton. Back the other way comes the speedy Hanson who left the puck behind and he shot it in. Talbot hasn't had much to do and he's out to play the puck. Here's Edler on his offside playing with Hutton. He's playing with everybody tonight. And that may be the case as Daniel circles. Edler's shot didn't miss by much. Eddie Purcell couldn't get to the puck before Ben Hutton kept it in for Vancouver. Henrik protected the puck perfectly against Hall. Daniel. Hansen's in the slot. Henrik plays the puck back and Hansen jumps in front of Darnell Nurse. Darnell Nurse hasn't seen a lot of the Sinines and he's seen what they do pretty well right now. There's a centering pass to Edler who's back on his off. And that will be, be the challenge for that whole line. Leon Dreisaitl having to go up against Henrik Sedin and a real challenge with a great veteran centerman who, as you said, cycles the puck so well. Got to have your head on a swivel. That was the Canucks' best shift, and here comes their second line. Right in for Bata, couldn't pull the trigger. Sven Berchi makes the puck settle down. Back to the blue line. Edler's still out there. Bartkowski with him through the puck into the corner. Bata for Berchi out of his reach. Riva steps in, up the boards to Pouliot. And Nugent Hopkins was there, and he couldn't get the puck out. Horvath for Bata. Berchi's in front. A wraparound. Talbot makes a wonderful save on Radom for Bata. Back-to-back -back good shifts for Vancouver for the first time in the game. Pretty good pace early on, but the shots are 6-2 for Edmonton. Radom for Bata trying to open the scoring. Stopped by Cam Talbot on Hockey Night in Canada. Well, the Oilers have seen more of the Sedins than they would like in the last few years. They've been Oiler killers. Yeah, Henrik and Daniel definitely have. And here Taylor Hall finds himself down low and does a pretty good job. This is where you want to keep Hall is in his defensive zone, but you can see. Legs moving, keep your head on a swivel, just keep them from getting to the net. And the best chance of the night, Rabin, Rabin <laughs> Verbata comes around and look at Talbot does a little bit too much of a bite on the fake. And I think if Verbata, Jim, had taken an extra second, he thought he needed to outquick him there and he could have been a little bit more patient, might have had an empty net. Willie Dejana likes what he sees, Craig, so he comes right back with the Sedins after the TV timeout. As the old expression goes, they've been so good against the Oilers when Edmonton landed at the airport. They were arguing over who was going to drive the bus. Matt Bartkowski. Area pass got to Henrik. Drop off to Daniel. He dumps it in. Yannick Hansen in on the fly against Eric Kreiba. Todd McClellan goes with his third line here. Korpakowski got hit hard by Andre Padan. Bartkowski is back. Mark Latest to win deep. Korpakowski, a centering pass. Turning and firing it off the side of the net was Latest to. And the Canucks make things settle down. The orders will start a change here. Padan now paired with Bartkowski. I think those first couple of shifts by Padan will at least settle the coach down and have maybe a little bit of confidence in putting him back out there. He's been physical. He's played pretty well at start. And they called him up the last time. They were so short-handed in Los Angeles. They played him on the wing, and they played him for three minutes and 54 seconds, and that was it. Jim, you mentioned who wants to drive the bus. Well, here's why. You look at 
in the league since 2000. Nobody's been better than Henrik and Daniel against the Edmonton Oilers. Jerome McGinley with so many games in Calgary as well, right up there. But there are certain teams that you just feast upon and do well. And the Sedins have done that to a number of teams, but in a division you play so often against each other. Dreisaitl's line comes on, and Jared McCann for an attacking zone faceoff is out against them. Dreisaitl won the draw, but McCann jumps quickly. And Leon's back to help his defense again. A good breakup. Teddy Purcell. And nobody with him. They were all back so far defensively. Alex Biega. He's been pretty steady, and he's been relied upon, too. He's had a few years in the American Hockey League. Some experience as a pro. And boy, when you get your chance, you better play well with it. And this is their chance with all the injuries on the back end. What a wonderful opportunity to prove to at least somebody that you can play in the league. Teddy Purcell trying to step up. The other trying to move the puck around him. Lyndon Vay in the midst of a line change comes back. Derek Dorsett will get to center, and he dumped the puck into the Edmonton bench. When it comes to great tasting sausage, there's no name and no place quite like Johnsonville. Great sausage comes from here. Jim, another one of those young players. There's been a lot of talk on the bench. McCann came off of that shift, and there was an immediate discussion between the head coach and assistant coach. And with the lineup that the Canucks have, there's a lot of discussion between whistles as well. After Henrik Sedin, they don't have an awful lot of experience no. at center ice. In the absence of Brandon Sutter through the neutral zone. Here's Darnell Nurse. Backhander stopped by Markstrom. That's the seventh order shot to two for Vancouver. They off the boards. Brandon Pruss clears the puck to center. They getting an opportunity as well with Alex Burrows. A late scratch with an upper body injury tonight. Linden got back into the lineup. Jordan Everly can't get the puck out of his own zone. Adam Crackle passes off. Bay to the front of the net. Tipped off the post by Brandon Frost. Hutton with a shot. Blocked once and he gets the puck again. Throws it to the net. Talbot flashes a little leather. Uh, Talbot relieved and holding on there. Does a good job of getting a face off and settle everything down. Crushed looks skyward as he goes hard through the middle. It's that middle drive. This is just a shot pass that got by Talbot. But right off the post. And Jim, early on here, it looks like both sides have been able to create chances, but they've been able to create chances off of turnovers. Vancouver early on, the Edmonton has had a couple as well. Oh, Horvat came on and won the draw. There's Padan again, and he's out with Bartkowski again. But Doug Lidster likes what he sees from this 22-year-old Russian defenseman. It's so important to have a good first couple of shifts to give him some confidence. Nothing like the first impression. Matestu poke checked along the boards. Verbata gets out. He's two on one. Berchi's with him. Verbata holds on and threw the puck at the net, and that was just all too long developing. Talbot makes the save. Okay, there's injuries on both sides, and you've got one of the best young defensemen, Oscar Kluckbaum, out. Davidson got hurt as well, and all of a sudden, Nikita Nikitin back in the lineup up from the American Hockey League, and that was a bad pinch there at the inopportune time. But watch Kopakovsky takes away the option, forces Verbata to delay to the outside, and Talbot able to get the save. Really became much ado about nothing, didn't it? Thanks to Kopakovsky. Sedins are back on. Up against Dreisaitl's line. Andre Sekera paired with Mark Fain. They get out to center. Good play by the Oilers to spring these forwards. Dreisaitl's on his backhand. Stopped by Markstrom. He couldn't control the puck on the rebound. And Alex Biega gets it back. Yega and Edler together. Hansen tips the puck to Daniel Sedin at center. And Mark Fain is there to dump the puck back in. Yega quickly to center. Long cross ice pass. Hansen couldn't handle it. Edler is there to pick up the puck. Throws it into the slot. Here comes Weller. Nice save by Talbot. Loose puck on the rebound. Edler off a skate wide of the net. And Hansen then over skated the puck. Couple more close calls for Vancouver. Teddy Purcell. End of a ship, dumps the puck in. Anton Lander, only four checkers. The owners change, and Yannick Hansen comes back for the puck at the end of his ship. And he gave the puck away to Pacarina. And took it back. Hansen stays late on this ship. Jared McCann up the middle. Tipped the puck into the corner, couldn't control it. Nurse will give away behind the net. Ronnie Kennens is there, number 41 for Vancouver. Oilers can't get out of their own zone. Packerinen deflected that off a of Canuck. 
And Talbot smothers it for a face off. Halfway through this Boxing Day game in Vancouver. Halfway through the first. Still scoreless on Hockey Night in Canada. For the first time in a while, the Oilers find themselves with playoff hope at this time of year. And Taylor Hall, before the break, said there are really promising signs. The veteran Matt Hendricks stated, we're committed to structure of our game. But leave it to the coach to set everybody straight. Todd McClellan said that they're not coming out of their end well. Their neutral zone game needs improvement. Power play PK needs to be polished up. And they need more offensive zone time. But he's gotten this group at a more mature time, and there's definitely improvement. Jim? Rich like from the Absolutely. <laughs> from the last win against the Winnipeg Jets. Said his team, he thought it plateaued. They need some practice time. Yep. December 14th, they were actually in a playoff spot. And they're only three points out. Here's Matt Bartkowski for Vancouver starting their breakup. Verbata. Got through the neutral zone, snaps a shot, Talbot with another save as the shot clock starts to even up. Vancouver starting to get more chances than Edmonton. Try side. Sekera jumps up with it. Taylor Hall. Edner playing the offside, stays with him. Sekera takes the shot, fought off by Markstrom, and he smothers the puck. Cassie talked about Taylor Hall and his positioning here. I really feel the organization feels that it's been a benefit so much talk about McDavid staying with him in the offseason and then to start this year there was some concern maybe that wouldn't be a good ad uh, idea I think instead they felt the youngster McDavid has really helped Taylor Hall allowed him to learn a little bit from him and mature a lot as a player and this has been one of those years where his play on the ice has been exemplary so the Canucks are trying to get through a stretch with injuries so are the owners they get McDavid and they probably get two players back when they get him because they get Neil Yakupov too. Yeah, it seemed to play his best with McDavid. McDavid really forced Yakupov to skate and get his game going, get his legs going. That'll put some pressure on the coach to find the ice time, right? You got a little bit more depth or put the pressure on some other players to win the ice Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Nurse is back. Cracknell's right on him. Justin Schultz. Jordan Eberle. Pass was knocked down. Ben Hutton sends the puck the other direction. Nugent Hopkins. Trying to find a little room. Slid the puck for Eberle. That went off the stick. And it was a high stick. And so play has stopped. Well, for Taylor Hall, this has been a year where Leon Dreisaitl and he have really started to click. And from uh, December on, he's been one of the best. Johnny Gaudreau down the Highway in Calgary has been the best, and that'll be the matchup tomorrow night. But, you know, you think of, I look, think of Taylor Hall a lot like Mark Messi as a young player. And at 24 years of age, Jim, Messi had already had 69 playoff games under his belt. And I know early on, Mark wasn't the overall leader of the team, but he grew into it very quickly because that team was so good. It's been such a tough start for Taylor Hall. I think this is the first year that he's really comfortable in his skin and developing and maturing as a player. Although at 24, he has played over 300 regular season games. And not one in the playoffs. And on a nightly basis, he's got to be learning from having to play against top players on the other team all the time. Tonight when he's out against the Cities, and it's Yannick Hansen who has the puck through it in front. And that missed everybody. It sends Alex Piega back into his own zone. Handler is advertised as playing a lot. We've seen him play both sides tonight. I was going to say, how many deep pairings have you seen already from the Vancouver Canucks? Quite a number of them, and Alex Edler is involved in several. Here comes Mark Letestu. He shoots, he scores! Perhaps the Oilers' most consistent line this season because they've been together is this third one centered by Mark Letestu. And he opens the scoring. And it's the turnover right at the defensive blue line. And watch what it does to Alexander Edler. He jumps up on the plate, doesn't know where the puck is. Verbata does it as well. And this is just a screenshot by Edler. Edler got caught in no man's land. He immediately looked back to his goaltender. This is the perfect view. How's the goaltender going to see that? No vision at all. Letestu, that fake, got it to an area where he could put it to the open net. And no chance at all there for Markstrom. Korpakoski and Hendricks, the other two members of that forward line, get the assists at 12.55. The Oilers open the scoring on the road. 
where they've had a tough time. Here's Andre Padan speaking of a tough time, stripped to the puck by Pacarina, and then he couldn't shoot. He looked up with Bartkowski coming at him, and he fanned. So no harm done. Bartkowski off the boards. Derek Dorsett got to center and no further. Nurse backs up. Schultz up the middle. Pacarina tips the puck in. With Lander and Gazdick on this fourth line. Ronnie Kennan's back the other way. Jared McCann with Dorset. McCann trying to make some room for himself up the middle. Dorset throw it to the net. All alone in front is Kennan's. He turns another shot as McCann joined in and he missed short side. McCann again. Kennan's had some time in front, didn't he? Facing the wrong way though. Hutton shot the puck off the boards and Talbot dives on top of it. And Jim, that's one of those shifts you just got to survive. The coverage by the Edmonton Oilers. They got puck watching. And you mentioned all by yourself. Look at everybody's watching at the puck. Schultz drifts over to the outside. Gazdick doesn't realize he's got a cover for the defenseman back. And that was a heck of a play in front. A difficult one to make the move for Kennens. But Talbot able to stay up and not give him any easy play. The coach is saying, why wasn't that Daniel Sabine? <laughs> yeah, leave him alone there. Nugent Hopkins won the draw from Henrik Sabine. But the Canucks win the puck. Henrik for Daniel. And the stick of Mark Fane knocked the puck away from him. Still, the orders don't get out. Two tries, and they're back in their own zone. Sekera up the boards. Nugent Hopkins stepping in to try and help. And on the third try, the orders get out. Yannick Weber paired with Ben Hutton under pressure from Nugent Hopkins. Made a play. And so does Hutton to center. Sekera stepped up on Henrik and Everly dumps the puck in. Jacob Markstrom. Oilers are changing. There's a little time and space here for Alex Viega. Adam Verbata. Big wide. Berchi knocked the puck down. Drops it off for Bo Horvath. In on Eric Kriba. Trying to get to the front of the net. Goes in behind the sharp angled shot from Berchi. Is an easy save for Talbot. Personal back to center. Taylor Hall. Dreisaitl shoots. Markstrom makes the save. Mark Letestu from Matt Hendricks and Lori Kropakowski at 12.55 and the Oilers lead on Hockey Night in Canada. Had a great time over the holidays. He's modeling a Canucks holiday sweater for some promotions. And like many of the Canuck players, he went to Whistler over the holidays. And thanks to Black Home Aviation, he and his fiance Marie-Pierre Moran, got to fly in a helicopter over the glaciers and mountains. The experience on Christmas Eve, he said, was one of the coolest experiences of his life. And it does look pretty cool. Jim? Should have a goal tonight, too. He, he's probably yeah, thinking. He was, <laughs> tipped one off the post. Good breakout for Vancouver. Alex Piega has the puck. It's the trailer. Sven Berchi shoots. That was deflected just wide. Darnell Nurse gets the puck back the other way. Taylor Hall. Dreisaitl trying to join him. And Taylor tripped over the blue line. And back the other way comes Sven Berchi. Gets ahead of Schultz. Can't take the puck to the net. Schultz recovered nicely. And the puck is sent all the way back down the other way. An icing call against Edmonton as the teams go end to end. Well, again, with this line, you, you see it at both ends. You try offensively a quick break that Taylor Hall ended up blowing a tire and Berchi just surprising speed I think on Schultz, but he does a nice job recovering. Berchi fought for a split second. He was in all alone, looking him focus on the puck, and when he did that and stopped his leg, Schultz, Schultz timed it perfectly. Nurse shot on the ice against the Sedins again, and they keep the puck in. Daniel with a tip for Henrik. Hansen goes to the front of the net. Hall back defensively, gets to the puck and out to center. He's two on two with Teddy Purcell. That's to his right. Can't get by Andre Padan. Rookie defenseman at Daniel Sedins back the other way. The drop pass to Henrik. Again, Hansen heads for the front of the net. Daniel can't fight off two Oilers. And Edmonton's back. Korpakowski, checked by Padan and knocked down. Barkowski along the boards. The test to the goal scorer was there. Nikitin steps in off the blue line, number 86 for Edmonton. Matt Hendricks gives him the puck. The test to Korpakowski wanted it, tapped his stick, and then he shot just wide. Eric Kriba, wide of the net. Hustling after the puck is Korpakowski. This line scored. And uh, they're really excited to be into the game and have another good shift. An icing call against Vancouver. 
The internationally acclaimed series about people saying hello and goodbye arrives this January. Hello, goodbye on CBC. Jim, with that icing here, here's an opportunity. Nugent Hopkins, you've got Henrik Sedin for the faceoff, but you got a little bit of inexperience on the back end with Padan at the end of a long shift having to stay out there and try to survive. Fully out on the left wing, Everly on the right. Mark Fain, Andre Secker on the ice just in case the Sedins catch their breath. Scramble draw on Henrik Winson. Daniel can't get the puck out though. Pouliot kept it in. Everly off the boards. Panan comes over at him. The puck goes to the inboards for Nugent Hopkins. Panan dangerously close to holding on to him. Sharp angled shot on Markstrom. He stops that and wisely stops play because the Canucks need the change. Well, you saw Everly chatting not only to himself but Nugent Hopkins. Lots of discussion from Nugent Hopkins on the faceoff. He thought that he wasn't able to get the advantage of being in the offensive zone but they're able to keep it in Everly with a little kickback does a nice job of moving quickly and tries to get it up and over Markstrom but that big body Jim covers a lot of net. Nugent Hopkins line stays on Vancouver gets its change with his baseline has come on here's Brandon Trust Bobs the puck into the middle of the ice Lyndon Bay is there to Trust with a screen set up in front back door yet it Weber and can't finesse the puck into the net Good setup for Weber jumping in off the right side, but they just can't quite finish it. There was the screen in front that didn't allow Talbot to see the pass right away, Jim. And that's why he's a little late getting there, but Payne did an excellent job coming back and making the play defensively. A good heads up play by Brandon Press to spot Danik Weber jumping in. Edler turns in a foot race here with Pacarina, and he wins it for an icing call against Edmonton. You know, one thing Vancouver does do very well is bring their defense up into the play, and you got to think the timing. Watch all the focus on the side. Three Edmonton Oilers up at the top of the dot, but then Mark Fain comes down. Lyndon Vay thought he was going to have a tap in. Trust with the good pass. The backhand just barely misses the outside, and Vay frustrated, not able to get his stick on it. It was a quick break for the Sedins after they were trapped on an icing call, but it's an attacking zone face-off, and they're down by one, and they're right back out. So Edmonton is scrambling to change here after they were caught on an icing call to get Dreisaitl's line back out. Hanson in second. Puck squirted loose, drive up the boards. Teddy Purcell, hard pass to the left wing. Hall raced onto it to his backhand. He's stopped by Markstrom. And with Taylor Hall's speed, that's not a bad play just to lob that puck up the left side. And it's knowing who's on the ice with you. And Taylor Hall's reading the play. Watch visually here as it comes along the board. Purcell knows exactly where his other winger is going to be. It's a long stretch pass that is a difficult task for Biega coming back. He plays it actually quite well because Hall's taken off, lets the puck go off the boards and skates himself right into it. And that little bit of a delay enough to make it a backhand shot. Off the ensuing faceoff, the Canucks clear the puck. Nikita Nikitin is back for it. He's paired with Dryba. Dreisaitl line stays on. Purcell. Dreisaitl had a look around before he got to the puck. Bumped by Edler. In comes Taylor Hall. The centering pass. Berchi picks it off. Verbata with some speed. Berchi heads for the net. Takes the pass. Missed the net. Horvat follows. There's Berchi with a chance to score in four consecutive games. And a great setup by Verbata. Verbata again with a slap shot that's blocked by Griba. And he sends the puck over the glass another play for all the good and the bad of in the offensive zone sometimes your whimsical play can be most dangerous this started with taylor hall blindly throwing it out in front for has got his head up the entire way forces the paddock to pass across and bear she thought he could get it past the glove does a nice job of getting to some open ice and just barely missed the outside Shots show 13-6 in favor of Edmonton right now. The scoring chances would be a little more even than that. That's Ben Berchie getting the most of his opportunity too, Jim. As you mentioned, he's been on a hot streak. Amazing what happens when you start going to the front of the net. And the coach 
gives you the opportunity to play. You've got to show that you can take advantage of it. Hendricks is back, chased by McCann in the last minute of the first period. A pretty good pace in a Boxing Day game. You're never really sure in these games what you're going to get in the games that had a few days off. I think the energy's been very good. Alex Piega's got some energy on this ship. He dumps the puck in, goes after Sekera himself. And the puck comes back to him, looking in front of the net where Brandon Prust is stationed. Dorset there. Lyndon Vey turns back. Piega jumps in off the blue line against Benoit Pouliot. Segura with a short pass to Nugent Hopkins. The Jordan Everly and through center. Still got some time here. Nugent Hopkins relays. That's wide of the net and out of the reach of Puglia. Corners hold the puck in. Brandon Cross turns. And he just fires the puck down the ice. And time will run out before there can be an icing call on the play. So a good energy first period and only one goal. Mark Letestu had it from his line mates Hendricks and Korpakowski at 12.55 of the first. Coming up in our first intermission, George Stromalopoulos with Bob Nicholson, the CEO and Vice Chairman of Oilers Entertainment on Hockey Night in Canada from Vancouver with the Oilers in the lead. Welcome back to Vancouver at Hockey Night in Canada. The late show where the Oilers have a 1-0 lead on Mark Letestu's fourth goal of the season. So the third line for Edmonton scored, but it's pretty clear from the first period that the first line for both teams, Dreisaitl and Henrik Sedin, are probably going to be the ones to do some damage. They're the most dangerous. You've seen a lot of examples of their speed and transition. And I think for Willie Desjardins, you, you've got to continue to push the play and really coach. I like the way that he got the Sedins out there when he got extra opportunity. And I think you're going to have to do a lot more of that in this game. So here are those same two groups against each other once again. Matt Barkowski is back. He turned up the boards for Vancouver. Try side. I'll try to hold the puck in. Bartkowski will try again. Nowhere to go, so he went up the glass. Hansen awkwardly helped him get the puck as far as center. And it's turned back by Teddy Purcell. Taylor Hall into the middle. Try side. I'll stick was checked by Daniel Sedin, and he's away to center. Danny Hansen backhands the puck in, and Vancouver will start a change as Mark Fain gets back. Andre Sekera to Try side and Hall, and Edmonton will need a change here. The long change second. Bo Horvat. They grab him for Bata, who's the only forward who had a shot on goal. But here comes Bo Horvat. Stopped by Tal, but there's a rebound. It's still loose. Verbat is there. Berchi's there. Puck has disappeared. And Bo Horvat, who hasn't scored in 24 games, so badly needed that. And you wonder how he has. This is what you saw at the end of last year. His ability to have speed to the outside, puck control. And there's one good save by Talbot. But Jim, more importantly for Talbot, he didn't give up on the puck. Watch the calmness in his net. He didn't overplay it, didn't panic, made two good saves. And Bo Horvat had two whacks at the rebound and frustratedly goes back to the faceoff guy. Verbata threw the puck into the corner. He had four shots of the six Vancouver had in the first period. Sven Berchi again at center, checked by Darnell Nurse. Best chances have been Berchi in the first and Horvat too. To start here. Here comes Benoit Pouliot. Can't get by Yannick Weber. Nurse from the blue line. On the other side, Justin Schultz with a shot. Blocked before it was tipped. And up quickly come the Canucks again, led by Verbata. And he dumps the puck in wide of the net. Berchi will forecheck. In comes Jared McCann to help in the midst of a change. Alex Biega. Paired with Alex Edler, dumped the puck in. Schultz is back up the boards. Derek Dorsett's there for Vancouver. Schultz started the clearing attempt. Pouliot got the puck to center. He wants to get off. Viega has a little skating room. Up the middle, Ronnie Kennens dumps the puck in for the Canucks. Dorsett. Kennens first on it against Nurse. Nurse double teamed and the puck was jarred loose. And it comes to Matt Hendricks. This line has been pretty dependable for Edmonton. They can play against anybody. I guess you'd like them to score a little more. They have 12 goals between them. But seldom a liability. The blue line, Nikita. Edler trying to slow things down a little bit. He throws the puck up the middle, Derek Dorsett. 
And Keaton is back. Dorsett's right on him. Pushed off balance. Good old Pack Arena. Ran into Brandon Prust. A test two off the boards. Didn't get the puck out. Bartkowski into Linden Vay. Prust. Return pass hit a skate. Andre Padan jumps it off the blue line. Got a rude welcome from Pakarinen. Prust centering pass off the skate. It's been a long shift for part of this Oiler third line. Luke Gazdick gives them a break as he gets the puck down the ice. No, he didn't give them a break because that's an icing call. And there's a couple of tired guys who can't change. It's Rogers Boxing Week wrapped in red event. Enjoy savings for everyone until January 7th. Hurry into a Rogers store today. So the Sedins will come on here in an icing call. Mark Letestu has been on for a little while. Luke Gazdick got a change. Pack Arena is fairly fresh. It's the key to the keep that you're worried about. Today. And the Keaton is back for the puck and he's under some pressure. Pack Arena. Sedin's take over. Here's Henrik up front. Hanson scores! Got caught on an icing call, and the Canucks took advantage. Yannick Hansen makes it a 1-1 game. And a turnover, Nikita Nikitin didn't get it out in the first chance, didn't get it out on the second chance, and then this dangerous line. They'll win the battle along the boards. Breiva can't get his men. How many times have you seen this? A backhand pass from one of the Sedins. This time, battling down low, it's Henrik gets the pass from Daniel, and a perfect saucer over the stick. And Hansen puts it underneath the stick in between the legs of Cam Talbot. So as a coach, you're either kicking yourself for not taking a timeout, but it's pretty early in the game, but also because your team actually did okay off the faceoff. It was after, and you didn't get the change, and the tired defenseman coughed it up. So a 1-1 game as the Sedin line strikes. Danik Hansen has his 11th of the season from Henrik and Daniel. And the puck is over the glass. Well, Jim, here's exactly what you're talking about in the situation off the draw. You could have lived to fight another day. Look at the ability for Nikitin here to just take it up the wall. And instead, a backhand pass that ends up right back with pressure. And then the Sedins take over. And this is one for Talbot. He got stuck in between. Thought he might be having to make a save glove side. Instead, Hansen put it between the legs. <laughs> Here's Alex Hedler holding the puck in. Shot wide for Derek Dorsett to go after the puck. He's thrown aside by Mark Fain. And the orders start a quick breakout. Here they come with that speed again. Hall to Purcell, and that was tipped by Jared McCann on the back check. From the blue line, Nurse with a shot. Kicked out by Jacob Markstrom. Dreisaitl's centering pass as the orders try hard to strike back. I went to Derek Dorsett, and he's out through center. Trying to slip the check of Darnell Nurse. Orders again. Pouliot into the middle. Here's Nugent Hopkins. Chips around Ben Hutton, who turned and stayed with him, forced him to the outside. Pouliot. Nugent Hopkins, a good stick there by Hutton. That allows Vancouver to get to center. Yannick Weber twice tried to advance the puck. Crust dumps it in. Cracknell in on it. Hasn't been a penalty in this game yet. Pretty quick pace and a 1 1 tie. Mark Letestu and Yannick Hansen have the goals. Nugent Hopkins, Aaron Pass, another icing call against Edmonton. Another example of this Hall line uh, with Dreisaitl. Dreisaitl makes the initial play, which creates the open ice. And watch Taylor Hall. He's looking for Dreisaitl. He wants to give it back to him. Instead, just waits a little bit too long. And a nice. Back check with a little help from his friend there as McCann gets back. Sedin's back on. Again after an icing call. They played a lot tonight. They come out on the TV timeouts and on the icing calls. Trying to take advantage again. 
Yannick Hansen, who took the draw. Here's Daniel Sidi. Nurse has got him wrapped up. In comes Henrik, a wraparound off the skate. He just about put it in off Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and Talbot covers up. Well, once again, this is the challenge playing against this line. They're so difficult to handle down low. You got a battle, and Darnell Nurse gets caught in the body, but can't get to the puck. You look at just a little skate pass from Daniel to Henrik, and Talbot wisely gets there and able to hold on. This is why it's such a tough battle. The experience of Daniel Sedin there as he keeps the play alive. So Willie Desjardins realizes he's got one experienced line tonight. He's really leaning on them a lot. Corey Korpakoski into the middle of the ice. A chance for Fane to shoot. Here's a chance. Yes, somehow Markstrom spreading out there. Got a little piece of that, but the puck is still loose. It was Matt Hendricks who had the wonderful chance, and Fane takes the shot. Markstrom the save. Another great save by Markstrom on the shot by Sekera. Oilers really buzzing, and it's that line again of Latestu's. Hendricks missed the puck. Yannick Weber gets the puck. Wink wide, but he gave it away. Teddy Purcell trying to step back in. He was poke checked by Ben Hutton. Nikita Nikita shot the puck in. Leon Dreisaitl had it poked by him by Hutton again. And the Sedins, Yannick Hansen to Daniel. He shoots and Talbot makes a nice save. Quickly back to center. A stretch pass intended for Taylor Hall. Got knocked over the glass and out of play. Canucks City line on an icing call against Edmonton has evened it up at 1-1 and another chance here for the orders and Matt Hendricks couldn't quite make it go. Welcome back. Connor McDavid has resumed skating expected back post all-star break. He had this advice for the world junior team that's over in Finland. He said I would say just turn off your phones, turn off your Twitters, Instagrams, whatever you've got, turn it off. Just try and make the world you live in as small as possible. I think that was the biggest difference personally. My first year I was reading everything the media had to say and what everyone was saying and it's not very good most times. My second go around I just made sure that I wasn't on anything. I wasn't reading anything and I definitely, and that just got finished, felt a lot better about it. Jim, Craig, I got through it. Whew. <laughs> that was a real grown-up response, though, wasn't it, for an 18-year-old? Absolutely. Edmonton Oilers outscored 1-0 in this second period so far, and 38-24 in second period. You don't know what it is about their second, but they haven't been particularly good. And they've given up a one-goal lead in this one and just about turned the puck over in their own zone again. And if they ever do get to the third, they're 7-0 and when they've been leading going into it. So the second period, definitely a bit of a problem. Here's Sven Berchi to Bo Horvat. He couldn't get it to the net. Verbata tipped the puck just wide on a second chance. Verbata again. This line's had some dangerous shifts. Dreisaitl gave the puck away up the middle. Gave it to Sven Berchi to his forehand backhand. Jared McCann waits to the blue line. Viega's shot that hit his own man Griba in front of the net. And Dreisaitl's trying to clear the puck. Again caught on the long change in the second period. Now he pushes the puck deep and heads for the bench. Matt Bartkowski goes wide, forces Nugent Hopkins to chase him. Darnell Nurse takes over. Justin Schultz, Nugent Hopkins with Everly and Pouliot. Ben Hutton backing up to Bartkowski. And up to center, and the puck drifted through the defense. Nurse, under pressure from Dorset, gave him the puck. The centering pass, McCann tipped it into the corner. Nugent Hopkins gets the puck. The center. Hutton's in a battle here against two owners backing up, and he got a break there because the owners went offside. Yeah, and the pressure's really been on Edmonton to make plays in their own zone. That's what Todd McClellan was talking about, some of the problems they've had, and here it's Nikitin again, not able to make the play, not winning the battle. Verbata takes the puck off of him, and Jim, you wonder at some point if he will be held back. Verbata talking to Berchi. They've had really good chemistry in this game so far and had the game's best chances. And Keaton, it appeared, had been banished to the minors, but he's back because of injuries. Clef Baum and Davidson, two pretty good defensemen, are out. This is one of those nights, though, that he might get banished to the bench the way it's been going. Adam Cracknell on Vancouver's fourth line, up the middle. Segra and Fane are back. Cracknell takes the man, trying to take the puck. Up the boards. Pacarinen 
Again, the Oilers don't get out of their own zone. Held in for a moment. Second chance. Hendricks got some time now. Bounced it off a skate. Hard up the middle. Sekera. Packerine and Lander goes to the net. And there's a little trash there for him to go after as Markstrom couldn't quite hold on to the puck. Jim, on the Vancouver bench, Henrik Sedin has been standing since he got back on to the bench. And you wonder, he's moving his leg around, doing a little bit of stretching. And that looks either hip or hip flexor. And he is a, an Iron Man and once <laughs> played 670 plus great games, but just missed two on the road trip. And how important is he? Look at his games played for the Vancouver Canucks compared to McCann, Horvat, and Lyndon Bay. There's a real dearth of experience below him, so you can't afford to have him out as well. Daniel's going to take this draw. And that's unusual. Maybe Hendricks got no power in his legs. Yeah, and that would be a telltale sign, wouldn't it? Personal right off the draw, and Markstrom makes the save and stops play. And this is a night where they've really been leaning on that line. And immediately Willie Desjardins gets Bo Horvat out. And Daniel loses that one. Luckily, nobody in front for a little bit of a fan shot, but... We'll have to track that. That does not look good. Horvat has been really good in his own end. Defensive zone faceoffs over 60%. I don't understand why that goes down so much when he's penalty killing, but he's been good five on five on defensive zone faceoffs, and he's in a battle here now. Puck still loose. Sven Berchi. Got Verbata ahead of him. Diega joins the rush on the right side. Berchi takes Schultz. Nurse takes the puck. Up the boards. Taylor Hall's job to get it out, and he does. Viega back the other way. Dry sidle in the middle just about ran into Horvat. And now he's got the puck. Purcell with the tip in. Viega's back with Alex Edwards. Pass to Daniel Sedin. Here come the Sedins again. Henry to Daniel. Hanson to the net. Rebound steered into the corner. Andre Padan jumps in through the puck wide in the net on the other side. Matt Bartkowski's there for Vancouver. Back in for Yannick Hansen. His stick was lifted. Henry for Daniel. Hansen alone. Up high. Missed the net. Andre Padan made a nice move. Lost Korpakowski. Took a shot that knocked down Matt Hendricks in front of the net. He's limping towards the bench. Korpakowski to center. Couldn't get the puck in deep. And back come the Sedins. Yannick Hansen almost got in the way. Up comes Bartkowski. Shoots off a skate in front of the net. Hendricks bounces the puck. Still can't get it out. Hendricks, Sedin, Ronnie Kennan's in front. Hansen missed another chance. And the Oilers are their own worst enemy here in the second period. They can't get out of their own end. Vancouver still with the puck after a change. Ben Hutton off the bench. He takes the pass back. Fakes. Takes. Hit the post. Hutton again. McCann's in front. Weber to Hutton. Around Korpakowski. Some tired forwards now for Edmonton. McCann with a shot. Wide of the net. Racing to hold it in. Yannick Hansen has been on for a while. And he's stopped again. That's his third chance in the ship. Hutton with a shot. Off the shoulder of Talbot. Yannick Hansen. Yannick Weber. Ben Hutton. Slips the puck into Jared McCann. Hutton. Passes off into the feet of Ronnie Kennan's little keep away going on here against the tired order group. Hutton, Yannick Weber, chased by Hendricks, who's sprawling on the ice. Here's Nugent Hopkins. He gets away to the net. There's a first penalty of the game is coming. Maybe a penalty shot. It's a slashing penalty. Vancouver will be shorthanded after all of that. The best chance came at the other end of the rink. What action, but Vancouver came up short. And Ryan Nugent Hopkins went to the net, slashed at by Weber, who gets the penalty on Hockey Night in Canada. Second period shift for Matt Hendricks and a few other orders. Well, the anatomy of a long shift that ends up with a couple of chances against. Great job blocking, but then trying to make a play, wants to get off, wants to get it deep. Instead, the turnover to Henrik Sedin. Look at the traffic in front of Talbot. He doesn't even move as the puck goes by and goes right off the bar. At the other end, an exhausted group. Weber thought he had chance. Hey, credit to Nugent Hopkins getting in there to draw the power play.
Nugent Hopkins is the only fresh guy that got on the ice. And I think some of the offensive players like Weber were getting a little tired too. Here's Cole Horvath. Shorthanded. First power play of the game and it belongs to the Oilers. This is old Pat for Vancouver. They just came off of yeah, and ten. <laughs> ten. They were shorthanded ten times. You give up a power play goal, but you're still 90% on the penalty kill. You know, that's an amazing night. 18 plus minutes of penalty kill. Nugent Hopkins. Leon Price. Personals down low. Taylor Hall is back at the left point right now. Justin Schultz out there with him. And Nugent Hopkins has to go back after the puck. Teddy Purcell relays to Leon Dreisaitl. Purcell chopped the puck behind the net. Brandon Prust is there, finds an opening and gets the puck as far as center. Really good coordinated pressure there by the Vancouver Canucks penalty kill. All four guys pressuring in unison and just no time or space for the Oilers. There's Schultz who on that long shift couldn't get off. He played two minutes and 46 seconds and now he's out of the power play. Hendricks is out there for two minutes. They almost wonder that's a tough start for Schultz, even though with the commercial break. This is a power play for Edmonton that's really been struggling. Just one in their last five games. Alexander out killing the penalty. He killed almost 11 minutes in Tampa on Tuesday. Here's Jordan Eberle on a second power play unit. Latestu's in the slot. Korpakowski one pass too many. Crossed up his own man. Pooley up and sent the puck down the ice. Almost like he thought he was going to get pressure from Ardini. I think yeah. he might have been able to pull that and shoot himself. Power play needs a recalibration. Yeah. Taylor Hall, second shift of the power play. Backhand shot went wide from Purcell. There's Darnell Nurse. Power plays over. Taylor Hall's centering pass. Weber's back on, and the centering pass was blocked. Diego did a good hit on Hall. Purcell and Barkowski got a stick on that cross ice pass. Dreisaitl goes down. The Bucks shoveled to center. And the Oilers are 0 for 1 with a man advantage in a 1 1 tie. No shots on that power play. Never really got the setup, did they? No, they didn't at all. That's kind of been their second period here, hasn't it? Yep. Ben Hutt. Jared McCann up the middle, leading a three on two. Radham Verbata snapped the shot into the glove of Cam Talbot, and that stops play. So the Oilers fail on the power play, and we're still in a 1 1 tie on Hockey Night in Canada Holiday Edition from Anchor. Board in Boston allowed five goals in the third period. They lose 6 3 to Buffalo. Steven Stamkos, two goals and assist. Tampa wins. Montreal now has lost 10 of 11. Crosby, one goal, one assist in his return as Pitt beats Minnesota. And all goals, it was 1-1 actually, all goals were by defensemen. Now 3-1 L.A. over Arizona. Jim. Arizona 7-1 and one in the Pacific Division entering that game. That's why they stayed in the playoff race. Here a 1-1 game, Vancouver will feel it's unlucky not to have the lead after a couple of big shifts here in the second period. Missed the net a few times. I was going to say that 13 shots doesn't seem to do it justice, does it? 10 missed opportunities. Yeah. Yannick Hansen must have all 10 yeah, of them. Yeah, he's got at least three of them. Here he is again with a shot. And just about got its way between the legs of Camp Talbot. Tomorrow night, don't miss the holiday favorite, Toy Story 3. That's tomorrow at 8 on CBC. So the Sedins are changing again. Will Henrik go to the bench and sit down or stand up? Yeah, we showed you earlier he was standing up that one shift. Well, he has not yet sat down on the Vancouver bench. He gets gets his brother to move over and continues to stand. So that's an easier way to tell them apart, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, much easier. So there's something going on there, Henrik. Like missed the games in Detroit and Florida on the road trip. Keeps lifting up that left leg and trying to stretch out that left side. So you wonder hip or hip flexor. Here's Matt Bartkowski with a shot. Talbot kicks that aside. Justin Schultz has had a couple of long second period shifts. Matt Hendricks threw the puck out to center, turned it over. And that's been a recurring theme, hasn't it, for Edmonton in the second period? Yeah, there'll be a lot of talk for Todd McClellan here about execution. He mentioned before how disappointed he's been the last few games with his team breaking out of their own zone and here in the second the pressure's been on you got to make a couple of quick plays to let that pressure subside from Vancouver his team has a record of 5-13-1 on the road and that simply must change 
They won seven straight at home. Out on the road tonight in Vancouver and tomorrow night in Calgary. And then six home games again. So they've got five straight against the Pacific Division. So this is a real important stretch to stay in the mix. For everybody in the Pacific. Yeah. After the icing call, the Oilers managed to make their change here. Alex Biega is the puck carrier for Vancouver. Ronnie Kennens gets in the puck deep. Anton Lander. Nikita Nikita turns back under pressure. And he fed the puck across to Darnell Nurse. And the Oilers get out to center, but the Canucks get the puck back. Lenny Weber hit Derek Dorsett in the seat of the pants. You can hear the groan from up here, <laughs> couldn't you? <laughs> Yeah, he let him know he hit him all right. Ben Hutton. Trying to get away from Luke Gazdick. He'll need some help and gets it from Sven Berchi. With Dorset. And Keaton commits to Dorset. Manages to drive the puck deep and then it comes out to Darnell Nurse and it poked away. He finally got it to Taylor Hall. Teddy Purcell on the other side. Back for Hall. Gets some space. Backhand of the puck into the corner. Dreisaitl. Purcell. Stops. Feeds Dreisaitl for Hall in front. Blocked by Yannick Weber. And Matt Bartkowski, his partner, takes the puck. Chips it onto the right side at center, but the Oilers got it. Horvat took it back. Here's Radom Verbata. Bo Horvat turns in front. Berchi'd been knocked down. Barkowski with a shot. There's going to be an Edmonton penalty. So Vancouver took one penalty in the second period, and now the Oilers take one. And it'll put Vancouver on its first power play as Leon Dreisaitl goes off. Jim, it's this line again for the Vancouver Canucks driving to the net. Sven berchi has been all around it. He's created chances. And when you're the centerman, you get caught up ice. Try hard to get back in the middle. He just gets his stick down. Goes dry sidle into the feet area of Bear Chief. But that's what he's been doing more of. Going to those hard areas, driving to the net, and at times the puck will find its way to you. That time you draw a penalty for your team to get a chance. The Oilers struggle with the power play. They're one for the last 14. Vancouver hasn't scored a power play goal in six games. There's only 11 opportunities over that period. And the puck's out of play. So Henrik, who was standing up anyway, comes on with Daniel Sedin and Yannick Hansen on this power play. Alex Burroughs had been playing on it, and he's out tonight. Edler and Verbat of the point man. Much like their season, Jim, the power play's been streaking. And here's Daniel again trying to win that draw back to his strong side. And Mark Lotesti won the draw. Hansen, though, jump right in to win the loss. Alex Edler, crowd forms in front. Here's Daniel. Pass down low, too hot to handle for Henrik. Verbata comes in to help out. His pass to Daniel. Hansen goes to the front of the net. Henrik boards. Edler. Verbata walks in, looking up. His pass tipped through, shot wide by Henrik. A tip through to Henrik Sedin, and he shot the puck in the corner. Verbata. Henrik. Daniel's in front of the net. Letestu comes over at him. Edler. Quickly across, just on side to Radom Verbata. Adler in the middle, won't shoot it. Henrik, Adler takes the shot, tipped wide of the net. Henrik stripped to the puck by Kreiba, who gave it back to Daniel. Danik Hansen steps in. Now an opening for Darnell Nurse, and he should be able to get the puck down the ice, and does. And the orders quickly go to the bench to try and change the penalty killers. Boy, what a play that was. So often that shot pass is deflected towards the net play. Daniel Sedin this time. He saw his brother to his left and directed it right to him. Here's Bo Horvat on the second power play unit. Jared McCann is with him. Side of the net, bare cheek. Ben Hutton. Verbata stays. He takes the shot that was tipped and Talbot got it. Bo Horvat again with a chance, but this time Talbot made the save. Well, much better execution on this power play for the Vancouver Canucks than they've been lately. Here's that play in the middle. Daniel just kicks out, but he sees his brother there. That's a direct pass that bobbled into the feet of Henrik Sedin. Verbata with the shot, and Bo Horvat still can't get a break. That was a good deflection, but Talbot fought hard to keep his pads closed. Anton Lander has been a good defensive zone faceoff man, but Horvat beat him. Weber, Jared McCann. Horvat has to go get a new stick after the faceoff. 
And Hutton to McCann and back. Yannick Weber's got the big shot at the blue line, but now he's going to turn back and chase the puck. In the last dozen seconds of Leon Dreisaitl's penalty. This is one for the Oilers here, this last minute. Just make sure you don't give up another one. I'd be happy to get in with a tie. Sven Berchi. Back to the blue line. Penalty's over. Yannick Weber with a slap pass. Lyndon Bay couldn't one-time that. Now turns towards the net. Hutton from the blue line. Lyndon Bay with Berchi in front. McCann drifting around as well. Good battle between Nurse and Bay. Goaltender is leaving for the extra attacker. Another penalty coming up here. Here is Hutton. Goes wide. Henrik Sedin over for Sven Berchi. Stops up. Played the puck back. McCann into the middle. Weber's shot. Stopped by Talbot. Rebound. Bay can't bury it. Sliding is Darnell Nurse. And I think it's Nurse who's going to get the penalty. Yeah, Nurse on Lyndon Bay. Just a heck of a battle going on there. He got the stick into the midsection. The internationally acclaimed series about people saying hello and goodbye arrives in Canada in January. Hello, goodbye on CBC. You know, there are times on a penalty you just got to credit the offensive player and they does a nice job of continuing to battle, work on his legs, keep his feet moving and a bad feeling for a defenseman when you're hunched over and your stick is caught in the midsection. That was a long, hard shift by Darnell Nurse. 28 seconds remain in the first, the second period. And the Canucks on the power play win the draw. And there to Henrik, and the play's broken up by Matt Hendricks. Ian Lander killed the penalty along with Dryba and Schultz. And one last rush. Well, this power play that hasn't scored in six games and a turnover at center ice, and that'll send them back into their own zone, likely to finish the period. Counted down to the end of the period, so there'll be a minute and 33 seconds with which to work for Vancouver at the start of the third period. They won't dislike their second period. The owners might, and they're happy to get out of it in a 1-1 tie. Coming up, it's George, Nick, Adam, and Elliot on Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Our late game tonight, a 1-1 tie in the Pacific Division between Edmonton and Vancouver. At Rogers Arena in Vancouver, there is some intrigue in this 1-1 tie between the Edmonton Oilers and the Vancouver Canucks. Darnell Nurse is in the penalty box for another minute and 33 seconds to start the third period. Henrik Sedin was late coming out. He hasn't been able to sit down in a period. Can't take face-offs. Daniel went 0-4 for 4 in the face-off circle. So Yannick Hansen took the draw to start the third period. But the captain is still out with a man advantage. Playing through something that is lower body related. Adam Verbata. Canucks had a very good second period, but only got one goal as Daniel moves in and shoots and right into the glove of Cam Talbot. Well, the one thing you'd be sure of is on a power play, you don't have to play much of a defensive end, and the grind isn't nearly as bad, but never a good sign when your captain coming off two games being missed on the road trip, played only 16-11, in the Tampa Bay game, and here he is struggling here again at home. They bring on Lyndon Bay to win the faceoff, and the Sedin stay with him. With a seven-game homestand, too. Henrik Sedin. Daniel Bay trying to get some space in front of the net. Pass comes up to the blue line. Here's Radham Verbata with Alex Hedler. Passes off. Henrik. Daniel. Edler, Verbata, missed the net. Henrik on the rebound off the boards, tries to bank one, and it's loose in front, and Korpakowski sent the puck down the ice. Never a bad thing to collapse back to the front, and Korpakowski ended up getting there first with that loose puck as Talbot couldn't find it. Adam Verbata, five shots on goal, won't get one there. Justin Schultz sent the puck down the ice. The Canucks missed the net 13 times in the second period, and many of those were good scoring chances. Late in a power play here. Derek Dorsett turned around, shoots up high, missed the net. There's another one. 14th since the start of the second period. Ronnie Cannons. Penalties over, it's five on five again. There have only been three minor penalties in the game. Two to Edmonton. Henrik Sedin 
looks out front. He wanted Dorsett to go to the front of the net, so he used his hand to tell him that. Henrik's backhander stopped by Talbot. And now the puck came right back to Henrik. Cannons was all tied up. The puck comes to Ben Hutton. He turns away from Lander. Good pressure after a power play, and Henrik is still on the ice as he has been for the first two minutes and ten seconds of the period. Schultz with a long pass on a Vancouver change. Taylor Hall on his off wing on the other side. Purcell couldn't handle the puck. Came back to him and he shot it off the side of the net. Lyndon Bay. Dorsett delays and the other forwards have to turn back or slow up. Now he advances the puck and he wants to get off. It's a big shift for this dry side of line here. Try to get some of the momentum back, get an offensive push, spend some time in the Vancouver zone. Purcell leads the way. Dry saddle with him on his left, so is Hall. Thrown towards the net. Edler got a stick on that. Nikitin held the puck here. Time, time, time. Now a three on two chance for Vancouver to get out to center. And Diego was leading the way as the puck got to the blue line and offside Vancouver. Well, the Vancouver Canucks now just two for 29 in their last. 10 games in two periods. They had a couple of good chances, though. The whack by Henrik Sedin. Vase trying to find it in front. A little spin around by Dorset, And much like the chance Hansen had in that second period up before, the quarterback directing traffic and can't quite find it through and Talbot finds the rebound. That's a big kill for the Edmonton Oilers here. Start the third period. And the captain continues to stand at the bench. Where's the back, Darnell? Try to go off the boards. Bo Horvat cut him off. Centering pass. Quick shot into the corner. And another chance for Verbata. And another miss. Here's Sven Berchi. Horvat fighting off a check. And Verbata in the slot. Nugent Hopkins goes down. Schultz moved the puck up the boards. And Puliot got it to center. Matt Bartkowski's the first man back. Watched by Jordan Everly. Here's Horvat after the puck. Horvath's played a lot against the new Jim Hopkins line tonight, and it's been a win for Horvath's group, except they haven't been able to finish. And there's an icing call again against Edmonton. Jim, you mentioned the misses. You, you've seen Berchi on that line, miss stick side and glove side. Here's another one in that soft seam. You can see there's five Edmonton Oilers around, but nobody on Verbata, and he looks skyward in frustration as he shanked that one a little bit wide off the blocker side. So that's 16 missing shots for Vancouver tonight. Gang who can't shoot straight. Warriors <laughs> fight the puck to center off the draw. They want to change again after an icing call. They get most of those players who are on the ice off. Mark Fain is back. Dorsett's right on him. Here's McCann along the boards. The puck is thrown towards the front of the net off the skate. And as Spain deflected that puck in the air, Talbot caught it. Celebrate the new year with lots of laughs. Air Farce New Year's Eve 2015 is Thursday at 8 on CBC. If you can have turkey legs, can you have rum and eggnog arms? The way that they've been shooting <laughs> wide on this one after the break? Oh, I guess you could. <laughs> Hansen's going to take the draw this time. He won a couple. Daniel only taken five faceoffs all season until he took four in the second period and lost the ball. It's the decided disadvantage when your captain is your most experienced center and he takes most of your faceoffs and now he can't take any. So here's the advantage now if you're Todd McClellan. If you can get the matchup that you've continued to have, this is where this line with Dreisaitl Hall and Purcell has been pretty quiet has to force Henrik to play in a tougher defensive zone position. It'll be interesting to see in the D zone whether Henrik plays down low or stays out on the wing. I would guess out high, wouldn't you? I would think so, and here comes Taylor Hall with a quick shot. Markstrom had to be quick with his left hand to get the glove in front and make the save. Yeah, that's where in this third period, even though you play again tomorrow night, you got to see more of this line. and. Purcell with a little flip back, and Taylor Hall, the deception there, looked like he was going to cut across further, but Markstrom able to stand his ground. It's almost like he was looking like he was going to take it all the way across and tried to quick shot it past the goaltender. Now Bo Horvat comes on, the dry side and beats him on the draw. Fain with a shot that was blocked by Horvat. Taylor Hall with a shot, missed the net from a sharp angle. All again, looks out front, made the pass, and Purcell couldn't finish it. 
He might have hit surprise. That's a great pass. Here's Hall again as the puck keeps coming back to him. Andre Sekera. But bounced on Drysaddle, so Viega's got a chance to clear it. Doesn't though. Fane kept it in. Purcell cycles back. Drysaddle. He cycles back to Taylor Hall. Sekera steps into the front of the net. They backed off a little bit and got the puck. A bank shot is behind Taylor Hall, but he gets to the puck into the slot. Price can't take it. And Bo Horvat does. To Sven Berge off his skate, but not to his stick. Nikitin beat him to it. Hall, late in the shift, gets over center. Heads for the bench. That's the best shift in about a period and a bit for that line, though. They look dangerous on the cycle and trying to hit each other in the cross seam again. And another icing call. This time it's against Vancouver. Now you talk so much about chemistry, and Teddy Purcell's starting to find his niche with Dreisaitl and Hall as well. He's in that soft area, but that's just a hard rocket of a pass that if you looked at that angle, hard for Purcell to pick up the puck. He knew it was coming, but he lost it for a second in the defenseman and wasn't able to get enough weight on that bottom hand to get it towards the net. Fourth line shift for both teams now. Lander and Vey. There's been a lot of this tonight, hasn't it? It's been a lot of icing. Yeah. Vey won the draw. And the puck is cleared. And it's another icing call. Same group. Boy, it just barely is. Dad's trying to argue that maybe it didn't go. He made a change, so he's got to go back to the bench. And you wonder if Todd McClellan, yeah, okay, he was happy for a second, Jim, to maybe get his fourth line a chance to get a shift against the Bay line. But I, I think with the second icing, you better try to take advantage of it offensively. And he had taken this group of Nugent Hopkins off very quickly, and now they're back out. Orders get the drop, but there's nobody over on the right side. Right now Nurse was crowding over towards Justin Schultz's side. Schultz is back. Taken out hard by Adam Cracknell. And the Canucks are in on the forecheck. Trust, Bay, Cracknell. There's Trust with Cracknell on in front working over Justin Schultz. Trust centering. And then Bay. This is against the Nugent Hopkins line. It's Vancouver's fourth and they're controlling the play. Barging in was Cracknell. Couldn't get the puck. In comes Vey, and he's got it for a second to Brandon Trust. Now centering, Cracknell shot went off a stick and wide. Vey gets to the puck. Trust to the blue line. Andre Padan changes his angle, takes the shot, deflected right on. Talbot made the save, and then the puck came back to him, and he smothers it. And that was a forgettable shift for the Nugent Hopkins group caught in their own zone. Still a 1-1 tie on Hockey Night in Canada, holiday edition from Vancouver. And welcome back and some good news regarding Dan Henhoos who was standing outside the dressing room taking pictures with kids in the intermission. A rough couple of days post-surgery after taking a puck to the face. He looks normal actually with the exception of a few stitches on his lip. He is speaking but it's obvious that his jaw is somewhat wired shut. A scary injury and unsure at this time his status to return but nice to see him out and around Jim. Indeed it is. With he out of Lucas Spiza and Chris Tanev is about 1,400 NHL games experience out of Vancouver's defensive lineup. They're on the attack right now. Derek Dorsett. They worked over by Mark Latestu. Ronnie Cannons has Jared McCann, his center in the slot. Cycles back in for Derek Dorsett. A couple of games has moved up the lineup. This tells a lot for Willie Desjardins, doesn't it? That commercial break, he goes with the third line. He had a good shift from the fourth line and give the Sedins a break there with the apparent injury. Most of the night after any of those opportunities, icing, some TV timeouts, he's gone with the Sedins. Jared McCann back in his own zone, watched by Matt Hendricks. Andre Padan, a pretty impressive debut on the defense tonight. Big man, can skate pretty well. Hasn't got himself in a lot of trouble. Here he is with the puck at center ice. Sedins are coming on, and the puck's out of play. Well, it's all about opportunity, Jim. If you see a player go down, it's one man's demise is another's opportunity. And right from the get-go, that was his first shift. 
Second shift, a couple of other big hits, and I, I think if you're coming in, you got to play as advertised. You got size, you got to be a banger, get in there, and play a solid, simple defensive game, and he's done that fairly effectively. Played over nine minutes, three hits. There's Henrik Sedin. Along with Daniel and Yannick Hansen. And once again against Dreisaitl's line, Leon Dreisaitl to Teddy Purcell at center. Pass back for Dreisaitl, it got by the end of the Vancouver captain, Henrik Sedin. Canucks don't get out, not yet. There's a penalty coming up here. And this is going to be against Henrik Sedin, who will go to the penalty box and put the orders on the power play for the second time. And Jim, this is... It's the hit series that you can't hide from. Jekyll and Hyde premiering Monday, January 11th on CBC. This is Henrik Sedin battling Leon Dreisaitl. And I think that's where he was mentioned earlier. For Todd McClellan, you got to take advantage of Sedin laboring out there. And Dreisaitl's a big handful. There's clearly the stick in the gut area to give the Edmonton Oilers a key opportunity here. And Dreisaitl, of course, stays out for the faceoff. Oilers get the draw. Here's Dreisaitl. Looks to the net. Pass to the side. Taylor Hall couldn't relay in front for Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Hopkins plays the puck back. There's the shot from the blue line. Markstrom made the save. And Teddy Purcell's shot was turned aside at the net. Horvath shorthanded. And Purcell was coming back into his own zone and intercepted that pass. And Hansen backs up at center with Adam Crackle killing the penalty. Teddy Purcell. Here's Dreisaitl with his forehand passed in front. Nugent Hopkins can't beat Markstrom. And this power play already looks better than the one in the second period that didn't look very good for Edmonton. And there's a guy that looks a heck of a lot better this season than he did last year as a rookie. Look at the ability to get a couple of big strides to gain some speed. He walks in all alone, and that's one that Nugent Hopkins just couldn't find the handle. Purcell shows some patience. Dreisaitl loses it for a second, so instead of going to the net and shooting, he passes. But Viega does a nice job of getting into the stick of Nugent Hopkins. Can't help but think of Dreisaitl looking a lot like a big Joe Thornton with a little bit more speed. Very different look on this second power play unit. Sekera and Eberle are at the points. Mark Letestu, Pouliot, and Korpakoski up front, and Eberle stumbled. Cracks couldn't make them pay. Instead, Letestu has the puck to the blue line. Andre Sekera fakes. Now he passes off. What a save by Markstrom sliding across. Puck is still loose, and he's down and out. And the Canucks get a hold of the puck and throw it down the ice. Brandon Cross sends it down. Well, there's a game saver there, isn't it? And Letestu shaking his head. Everly's had a tough shift here. He just got buried on the other side of the ice. First time he did it to himself. This time it was Barkowski that got him. A little tangle footitis on the other side. But you're right. That was a hard hit head first into the boards. And he goes off. Out of the last 30 seconds of the power of Lee Dorsett. At center, Dreisaitl takes the puck back. He's got Purcell with him and Hall again after a quick rest. And here comes Teddy Purcell. Has a look around, looking for Dreisaitl, but reading that perfectly was Derek Dorsett. Now Justin Schultz got a problem with his skate as he fell twice, Jim, at the blue line. He just rocked it off to get some help. Sekera dumps the puck in. Five seconds to go in the penalty. Henrik actually sat down for a bit in the penalty box. Oilers have the puck. Pass for Hall was intercepted. Henrik's back on, and he's just to the left of Yannick Hansen. Daniel's over on the right. The drop pass. Henrik to Daniel. A bouncing puck, and he feeds it in. Henrik covered by Hall. Here comes Ben Hutton. Henrik sitting right up the middle. Yannick Weber shoots, and he missed the net. There's another one. Daniel City Hansen jumps to the front of the net. Henrik can't get the puck. Teddy Purcell does. Hansen caught him from behind, forces him to the right side, and he dumps the puck in to facilitate an oiler change. More than halfway through the third period in a 1-1 tie. Matt Bartkowski straight up the middle. Pass to Verbata. Finally put one on the net, and this one's kicked up into the netting by Cam Talbot. 
26-19, the shots for the owners. It's still a 1-1 tie on Hockey Night in Canada from Vancouver. Nobody's really sure about the injury to Ryan Miller, so Markstrom needs to put a string together because he, he might have to play a string. <laughs> he did, as you see, Jordan Everly gets tangled up, but look at Markstrom battle through the traffic. He takes a quick peek back to his left, sees the pass going, and Latestu didn't quite get all of it, got it in the middle of the net, and Markstrom able to slide across and make an important save on the penalty kill. Vancouver's only showing 20 shots, but they've missed the net 16 times, right? They've had great A opportunities that you would call good chances, but they never actually hit the net. Honey, they shrunk the nets. There's a turnover, and Radom Verbata gets the puck. A one-timer, not anywhere near the net from Berchi. Barkowski dumps the puck into the corner. Berchi's there. Verbata in the slot. Can't make the puck settle down. It clanked off his stick, and Jordan Everly has the puck. Drives Barkowski back at the blue line. Yannick Weber back against Nugent Hopkins. This Nugent Hopkins line needs a better shift than its last one. Justin Schultz waits on a change. Darnell Nurse to center. Crust stands up. The test two dumps the puck in. Korpakowski's the four checker. Alex Piega back up. Turns a couple of times to Adam Cracknell. Giveaway straight up the middle. A test two into the glove of Jacob Markstrom. Well, Jim, the Edmonton Oilers trying to find a way to have some road success. At, at home, they've actually found a way to be pretty productive offensively, get their save percentage up to a top-notch level. But on the road, they're struggling to score goals. And, you know, in this game, they've been able to get the save when they need it again by Cam Talbot, but the offense hasn't quite been there. Part of that 7-0 run at home was Anders Nilsson. He played Lights a out. great streak, didn't he? And Talbot, though, it's hard to criticize his game tonight. I think he's been very solid. Here he is out to play the puck with Jared McCann moving in. Schultz starts the breakout. Korpikoski. Henrich gives chase. Viegas back, but he's got support. Derek Dorsett was back. Ronnie Kennens threw the puck out to center. Sekera to Mark Fain. Both teams are changing. Here comes Taylor Hall once again. Moves in. Fired a shot. That was a hard one. And Markstrom made the save. Hall again with Purcell and Dreisaitl. In deep and penalty coming up. There'll be a hooking penalty that will put Vancouver shorthanded again. Now here's what speed does to you. Taylor Hall comes off the bench, and there's a split-second decision you have to make if you're Alexander Edler. Do I go after the puck, or do I back up? Boys in the studio talked about that. He backed up instead. That gave Hall a second to get in, and then McCann in on the hands there. It's not much of a hook, but got him right in that top hand. The fans reacting to what they just saw on the big screen. So Edmonton's third power play, they're 0 for 2. Drysaddle, Purcell, and Hall have just come on the ice, so they're fresh and steady. Nugent Hopkins on the point. It's Schultz, and Nugent Hopkins is back. Pursued by Yannick Hansen. Hansen with Horvat. Edler and Weber on the penalty kill. And finally, the Oilers break out through center. Nugent Hopkins passes off. Taylor Hall. Two Canucks came at him on the Dreisaitl side. Fights off the check. Then Taylor Hall. Nobody in front. Nugent Hopkins side of the net. Passes to Dreisaitl off the heel of his stick. Might have been deflected by Edler. Dreisaitl again gets the puck. Nugent Hopkins went to the front of the net. The pass comes over to Teddy Purcell. He turns back. Justin Schultz is at the blue line. On the other side, Hall moves in his cross ice pass deflected out of play by Bo Horvath. Uh, the Oilers got the one chance that they were looking for, and that's Dreisaitl down low. Nugent Hopkins kicks down. The seam opens up, and this one just shanked. It didn't quite react quick enough to get it as Nugent Hopkins had to filter it through both a skate and a stick. And much like the Latestu chance, didn't get the shot he wanted. He hasn't missed many of those since he was called back up to the Oilers. No, there's a stretch there where that one's been bang, bang, play down low in the back of the net. He's been a great story for the Edmonton Oilers as dry side.
The test to Pouliot, Korpikoski up front. Jordan Eberle hoping for a better fortune at the blue line than the last power play. Andre Sekera. Nothing doing against Brandon Crust to get the puck through. He turned it over. Here comes Cracknell. Crust is headed for the net. Short handed. Stopped by Talbot. And Talbot got hit in the head Did and he's he hurt. His head got hit right on the back of the post as Cracknell came around the net. I don't think there was anything that Cracknell was trying to do. It's just one of those plays at the net that Talbot made the save, went for the rebound, and his head snapped back hard against the post. Heads up play, blowing the whistle by the official there. Yeah, he was quickly writhing in pain as the puck came back up the ice. Let's have another look at him in the two-on-one. His focus here is on making a play. And right there, see how far out, right on the top of the forehead, and that just snapped his head back. And here's Jim, we've talked about it numerous times in games when you've seen these kind of collisions. It's almost a necessity, isn't it, that he's got to come out of the game. Think about the concussion protocol around the National Hockey League. There that, is a spotter in every building that should be watching this and determining whether or not he should come out of the game. There are hard to tell symptoms with a mask on. Yeah, but no question that's about as hard as a head hit as you're going to get. And that snapping back his neck, he's having a discussion there. This is a tough spot, and the goaltender shakes his head, but. And on the bench, Anders Nilsson didn't move an inch. Look at Cracknell's going after the puck out of midair there, so his focus, and bang, that's a hard collision that just snapped the back of his head back into the post. Maybe whiplash as much as Absolutely. his head hitting the post. That can't feel very good at all. And he's staying in the net. Well, this will be a heated discussion and debate throughout the next eight to ten months, won't it? Player gets hit with a hard punch and is looking a little woozy. He's got to come off. And the goaltender, there's been numerous times you've seen it like this. Meanwhile, the Oilers are still on the power play. That was a shorthanded chance. And Dorset forces this power play back into its own zone again. They'd love to test Cam Talbot now. Here's Leon Dreisaitl. Gets through center, passes to Purcell. He just about got that up to his forehand. Taylor Hall around for Dreisaitl. Back to the blue line and Justin Schultz defers to Hall. His shot not quick enough. Blocked by Horvat and it broke his stick. Dreisaitl up the boards. There's no Hall there. And the penalty's over. McCann's back on. Here comes Derek Dorsett. Turns and he ran into Nugent Hopkins. McCann's after the puck against Darnell Nurse. Squirt it loose. There's a centering pass by Henrik Sedin. Didn't get to Bartkowski. And Dreisaitl slowly moves out of his own zone. Now he turns back. Hendricks, Korpikoski and Latestu, and again the puck deflects and it's out of play. So the Oilers are now 0 for 3 with a man advantage. Oh, it's a good little stretch for Talbot there to just gather his focus. Still 1-1. One, one. Now to five minutes to go in period number three on Hockey Night in Canada. Tonight's goal scorers, Mark Latestu for Edmonton, Yannick Hansen for Vancouver. Well, late in the first period, a turnover at the Vancouver line ends up with a perfectly placed shot through a screen of Edler. And then a battle down the corner after a icing call and a turnover again. It was Yannick Hansen on the doorstep to tie it. It's been a lot of back and forth here. We're coming off of Ken Talbot sticking in there after a heck of a collision. With hasn't, hasn't faced a shot since he got his head cracked. Henrik City, who has been sitting in the third period, which means he must have got some treatment of some sort in the second intermission, but he still can't take a face off. And he's out with line mates Daniel Sedin and Danik Hansen again, and here they come. Sekro over to meet Henrik. Daniel and Fane join in. Puck came loose. Hansen gets a chance to move out front, and he tried a little back pass. Eventually, Daniel Sedin got it. His pass to Henrik eluded him, but the speedy Hansen gets over to get the puck, and the Canucks keep it in. Hall couldn't get the puck out against Daniel Sedin. Edler 
moves back to center. Diego up the middle. Daniel at the end of his shift dumps the puck in. Another shift where the dry side of line this time was contained in its own zone. Nugent Hopkins, Everly, and Pouliot are back. They're playing against the Horvat line again. Pouliot can't get the puck in deep. Yannick Weber won't let him. Berchi to Weber. Verbata and out. Berchi again. Verbata speeding down the right side. Horvat goes to the net. In the cutoff, Berchi is Justin Schultz. So Nugent Hopkins back for the puck. Starts out of his own zone. On the right side to Jordan Everly. Slips it through. Darnell Nurse jumps up on the play. Battles in behind the net against Bo Horvat. And Nurse backs off defensively. Everly wins a battle out of the corner. Nurse fires a shot. Markstrom made the save. Berchi. For Vancouver got the puck to center. Nurse to Latescu and right back in for Edmonton. As this clock ticks down towards what might be overtime. There's a shot by Karpukowski was stopped. Rebound and Henricks can't make the puck settle down to get a shot. To the blue line, the Keaton shot deflected wide. Latescu, Henricks in front. This line has been pretty good most of the night, and they have the Edmonton goal. Dryba with a shot. Oh, that didn't miss by much. Had a little daylight over there, but the puck missed the net. Good energy shift, as you mentioned. They just get in on the forecheck and pressure and turn pucks over. Now the Canucks breaking out. Cannons left the puck behind. Taken away by Drysaddle. That line had a quick shift, a quick rest, and is back on again. Trying to get a favorable matchup here. Vancouver's changing on the fly. Getting their defense changed so that Edler's back on the ice. Fain and Sekera. Now to Taylor Hall. A little tip for Dreisaitl. Cracknell chases him through center. Teddy Purcell. Puck deflected off his shin pads. Taylor Hall in tight. Can't get a shot away. Up the board. Sekera holds the line for Edmonton. McCann blocked his pass. Ronnie Kennan's at center. And he'll dump the puck in. And we're under two minutes to go in the third period. And overtime has not been kind to the Vancouver Canucks. But with a divisional game, I think both coaches want to make sure they get a point out of this, don't you? Get at least get it to overtime. Cardinal there shoots the puck back in. Jacob marks from out to play it. Got it by Nugent Hopkins and Schultz. Filling in for him is Pouliot. Nurse. Markstrom out to meet the puck. Pouliot's four checking. Barkowski is back. Everly knocked the puck away from him. A centering pass. And Nugent Hopkins was alone in front, but it was a blind pass. Didn't get to him. Here's Henrik Sedin. Yannick Hansen speeds in. Henrik for Hansen, and he hit his head on the post. Driven hard into the net. Yannick Hansen's going to need some help as they wave to the bench right away right across the forehead as he went hard and fortunately he has a visor but as you can see it didn't have all that much help or impact boy driving to the net the really try to focus but that is an ugly cut lovely passing play and Henrik Sedin slipped it back for Yannick Hansen he was driven right into the post uh, Sekera there he just got a little bit delayed and that opened up some area there and it was the drive a hit Again, much like the Cracknell, not intentional. It's one of those as a defenseman, what else are you going to do? And Hansen, with the speed, just continued focused on the puck, got driven in, and Cam Talbot able to get across and out of the way. But the height of his head, boy, right on the top of his forehead. So he needs to go to the dressing room, and we'll watch with interest to see if he gets back. Left on his own steam, and you know he'll want to come back as Lori Korpakowski comes back for Edmonton. This line again, and boy, they've had some good shifts tonight. Hendricks in on the four check. The Canucks beat that, and out they get. Radam Verbata dumps the puck in. Cam Talbot wheels it in and stops play with 42 seconds left in the third period. in the overtimes, Jim, and it's hard to believe. The Edmonton Oilers, I don't think surprising anybody that they're 7-2, and 5-2 and two in three-on-three, three, but just shocking that the Vancouver Canucks with 
the Sedins and the players that they have 0 for 7 on 3 on 3 and 2 for 9 overall. Just amazing. Orders get the draw. Letestu gets to center. Shoot in. Here comes Dreisaitl and Hall again. And the puck is out of play. And we're down to 28 seconds to go in the third and bring in Cassie. Thanks, Jim. And a Budweiser red light scoreboard in all games final except for this one. And both Arizona and L.A. get points as the Kings win in overtime 4-3 thanks to Kopitar. So a bit of the worst case scenario in that Pacific Division game for Canuck and Oilers fans. Jim? So Arizona 7-1-1 one one in the Pacific Division. That's going to be the deciding factor the way it's looking right now, how close everything is. Horvat and Dreisaitl to face off. The Canucks get possession. Handler safely to center. Press tipped it in. Force it on the fly against Cam Talbot. Back the other way, Taylor Hall. Dreisaitl wanted the puck with it. Wouldn't settle down for Taylor Hall. Alex Biega is back. Cross tried to step in. Teddy Purcell moved the puck to the blue line. Now Nurse has to turn back. Here comes Brandon Frost. And a good recovery by Darnell Nurse just as the horn sounds to end the third period. And we'll see three on three overtime. Where, as mentioned, the orders are five and two. Vancouver's 0 oh and seven. Three on three next to Hockey Night in Canada. This overtime period brought to you by Subway Restaurants. More fresh fuel for more hockey. Subway. Eat fresh. Well, for a few minutes there, Arizona caught Vancouver. And now Vancouver's got a valuable point. So does Edmonton. They're still three points apart in the Pacific Division. And another big point is available here. You think about Vancouver's season and where they'd be if they'd even won half of those overtime games. Yeah, and when you think of three-on-three, three, you think speed. And the fact that Yannick Hansen went into the crossbar, that's one of the speediest players for the Vancouver Canucks. This tandem, though, for the Edmonton Oilers, Dreisaitl and Hall have been so effective in the three-on-three -three and so dangerous. The captain of the Canucks is once again refusing to sit on the bench. He's standing once more. Yannick Hansen is not back at the bench. Jared McCann, Verbata and Hutton start against Dreisaitl, Hall. And Andre Sekera. Hall and Dreisaitl have made some spectacular plays together and in three on three. Dry saddle breaks up. Watch by Hutton who's backing up. Look at the speed to his backhand forehand. Stopped by Markstrom and there's no rebound for Hall. What a rush. I mentioned the abilities of Dry saddle and the confidence that he has and the way that these two work off each other. They crisscross here looking to see if there's an opening. Dry saddle decides to go one on one and a heck of a job by Markstrom holding on to a rebound as Hall was following up from behind. Horvat comes on for a faceoff. Dreisaitl and Hall will stay with Sekera. Matt Bartkowski with Berchi and Horvat for Vancouver. Horvat didn't see the puck coming towards him, so Sekera gets it. The Oilers have it back. Dreisaitl to Hall. Moving in, takes a shot, kicked aside by Markstrom. That was a forward back again. There's Sekera. Hall's at the side of the net, wants the puck and gets it. Sekera jumps into the front of the goal. Dreisaitl passes back, gets a hold of the puck, threw it in front. Sekera can't bury it. Cleared away. Here they come again. Hall trying to feed Sekera in front. And again, it's turned back to center ice. And Hall will pass back to his goaltender, Talbot, so he can get a change. Sekera on the doorstep. He was the hero in Boston scoring the overtime winner and he had nothing but a wide open net there. Here's Darnell Nurse with Jordan Everly. Drives wide on Alex Hedler. Sedin twins on the ice for Vancouver as well. Everly trying to open up some ice. He does. He shoots over top of the net. Nugent Hopkins is with it. Daniel Sedin and Henrik in the corner. And they'll pass the puck to Alex Hedler and Vancouver should get out of its own zone. Daniel to center. Moving in on Darnell Nurse. Stops up. Spins away from Nugent Hopkins. Henrik was parked at center. Looked like he was going to the bench. And now he stays. And a giveaway. And here comes Jordan Everly. 
Can't get by Daniel Sedin. Back the other way they come. Henrik has stayed on. Edler busts for the net. Henrik's pass was deflected by Nurse. Now Henrik has the puck again. His line mates are changing. On comes Yannick Weber, who's fresh. Daniel is still there. And he keeps Jordan Everly from getting out. Henrik Sedin. Daniel in front. Weber stopped by Camp Talbot. Big saves both in, big chances to end this, and it's still going at three on three. And Jim, two shifts that were each about a minute long, which you just don't see in three on three overtime. Dry Seidel and Hall and the two Sedins, both of them. They usually, if you do see it, it's at the it's other it, end yeah. that the puck goes in the net. Here's Yannick Hansen back from the infirmary. And over and back at the blue line, it's offside with 2.15 to go in the third. Boy, unbelievable chances at both ends. So Dreisaitl with the fake shot, the pass to the middle, and it was there for a second. Credit Berchi and Bartkowski coming back to the middle, and this is all Cam Talbot. He reads it perfectly, comes out aggressively, and Everly there as well to get a piece of it as Weber breaks his stick in frustration on the bench. Couple of minutes to go in three on three. Schultz up the middle for Hall, and the puck goes by him. Marks too much to play. Jim, that's all on Schultz. He had Hall for a breakaway if he makes a good pass. Back comes Bo Horvat. He's got some speed. Tried to cut to the middle. Schultz broke it up. This time he hits Hall. Benton Hutton is the defenseman back. Coming up late is dry side. He takes the pass. Gets away from Verbata. Cuts in. Markstrom stopped him. The puck is still loose. Taylor Hall turns away from Verbata. Worked the puck in front of the net. and off a skate. Sekera chases it. Leon Dreisaitl, watched closely by Verbata. Led the puck in behind the net, now the Oilers have to get back. They're changing, Hutton gets to center, just about turned it over to Purcell. Here comes Bo Horvath. Dreisaitl is back to check him, the Canucks are changing. A pass for Berchi was knocked down, and Teddy Purcell has to do this on his own because his mates are changing. Markstrom's up to meet the puck, Bartkowski looks up ice. And Hansen at center. Now the forwards crisscross, and the pass comes to Yannick Hansen. Plays him down the right side, he shoots, he scores! <laughs> Boxing day, and the Vancouver Canucks finally win a game in three-on-three -three overtime. Yannick Hansen back from the hospital to score the winner. We saw chances at both ends. We saw Sekro with a wide open net. Weber coming down the pipe. This one right off of a breakout. Simple play. They get a little bit of open ice for Hansen, but this is one you got to make the save. He's out aggressively. Hansen with his head up and right underneath the blocker and squeezes between the arms of Cam Talbot as he looks back. A good hard shot, but that's one that you know the Oiler goaltender would dearly love to have back. Yannick Hansen, second of the night, 12th of the season, moments after he'd been driven into the crossbar and had to leave probably to get stitches. And he comes back and wins it in overtime, and Vancouver gets the valuable second point. So the three stars of tonight's game won 2-1 to one by the Vancouver Canucks. Hansen with a pair of goals. Markstrom wins back-to-back -back games and his first one at home for Vancouver this season. And Mark Letestu had a strong night and scored for the Edmonton owners. Vancouver Canucks start a seven-game homestand and continue the road woes of the Edmonton Oilers. Yannick Hansen wins it. 2-1 to Vancouver on Hockey Night in Canada as we send you to George Strombolopoulos.